Hi, I'm Kevin Deal with Upscale Audio and today we're going to look at the super super cool Matsushita 7DJ8 PCC88 which is an equivalent for all intents and purposes to a 6DJ8, 6922, any of those numbers. This is, there's a bit of history of this too for me personally because it's the thing that got me into tube hunting. I had found a pair of these in, uh, in International Service Master boxes. This was like a gajillion years ago when I had an audio research preamp and I plugged them in and I go, oh my god, oh these sound so freaking good. I mean they were just butter. And so I bought the last ones that they had and I decided now I want to get some more and I looked on the tube and it said made in England. Well, I had some other tubes that were made in England. I had some Mullards and then some Brymar, some, but they didn't look exactly the same. Pins didn't look, just things weren't the same. And that's what started me on this quest of figuring out who's really making what and who's being truthful about making what and, and what's going on behind the scenes. Back in 1969 or 1970, being Japanese was not cool. I don't know if you remember, but Datsun had come out with the 240Z. You know, the, everybody said that Japan Incorporated was going to own the United States. All of these bad things that were going to happen. The kind of way, the way they talk about China today. So, having a tube made in Japan was not cool. It was not cool. I mean, people weren't going to buy them, so they would mark them as made in England. Uh, I want you to look at this box because it's pretty cool. National boxes. This is the way they used to do, do shit, which was cool. Look at this. It's got its own little two holder. Isn't that cute? We open it up, and there it is. Matsushita National PCC88. This tube is very organic sounding. That's the best way to describe it. It is not hyper etched. So if that's what you're looking for, something that's bitey on top, look elsewhere. But if what you're looking for is a tube that has that thing that makes you want to melt into your chair, then this could very well be your answer. The cooler thing about it is, is that you sell them for an insanely cool price. This tube, if it was a 60J version, would be twice as much money. If it was a Telefunken or a Mullard version, it would be four times as much, five times as much money. We sell these for a very, very reasonable price, and it makes it easy for you to have some fun without making some commitment like you're getting married or something. So, the tonal balance is neutral. The sound is a little warmer. The bass is really great. Uh, I can't think of anything that they do wrong. So, and they're pretty durable too, but they, say they seem to work real well. Um, I still wouldn't put it into an Audible Illusions Modulus 3A, but the, in my opinion, there's only one tube that you should use in that preamp, and this ain't it. But for anything else, for an audio research, Sonic Frontiers, for carries, Anything that uses a 6922 or 60J8, this is your answer, or at least one of your answers. I think that's it. I want to thank you for shopping Upscale Audio. When we test these for you, we're going to do it one by one by one. We're going to put it in a simulated phono stage where we can listen to the tube all by itself with headphones. Boom, right there. So we're very, we're able to, to judge them closely and look at them and make sure that they perform right. So when you get a tube from us and we give you these cool little numbers on the side and the grading for noise on microphony, that's the real deal. That's because we have people that are dedicated to giving you the very best stuff. I want to thank you for shopping at Upscale Audio.